while in the newer states and territories of the Rocky Mountain region, males are largely in excess, owing, of course, to the fact that these are new regions in which society has not yet reached settled conditions. Race. The population of our country is composed, as regards race, of about 55 million whites, 7,500,000 of Africans or mixed bloods, a few hundred thousand Indians, and 150,000 Chinese and Japanese. The natives of China and Japan are comparatively trifling in number, and since the Chinese Exclusion Act went into effect, immigration has ceased, and except upon the Pacific coast, where nearly all of them are found, they form too trifling an element to require consideration. The Indians, most of whom are confined to the areas classed as unsettled, plate 7, figure 2, will be left to the ethnologists. The Africans present us with the spectacle of an inferior race existing in juxtaposition with the whites, and, since the early part of the century, unaided by additions to their numbers from abroad. For seventy years this race existed in a state of slavery, for the last thirty more or less in a state of freedom. It is interesting to observe the progress of this race and compare it with that of the whites. This is presented in the following tables, the first of which gives the total number of each race, while the next table shows the proportions of the two races, given in percentages of the total at each census. White and colored population by decades. Census years, white, colored. Census year, 1790, white, 3,172,006, colored, 757,208. Census year, 1800, white, 4,306,446, colored, 1,200,000, 2037. Census year, 1810, white, 5,862,073, colored, 1,377,808. Census year, 1820, white, 7,862,166, Colored, 1,771,656. Census year, 1830. White, 10,537,378. Colored, 2,328,642. Census year, 1840. White, 14,195,805. Colored, 2,873,648. Census year, 1850. White, 19,553,068. Color, 3,638,808. Census year, 1860. White, 26,922,537. Color, 4,441,830. Census year, 1870. White, 33,589,377. Colored, 4,880,009. Census year, 1880. White, 43,402,970. Colored, 6,580,000. 793. Census year, 1890. White, 54,983,968. Colored, 7,638,282. Ratios of white and colored population by decades. Census years, white, colored. Census year, 1790. White, 80.73, colored, 19.27. Census year, 1800. White, 81.13, colored, 18.87. Census year, 1810. White, 80.97, colored, 19.03. Census year, 1820. White, 81.61, colored, 
18.39. Census year, 1830. White, 81.90. Colored, 18.10. Census year, 1840. White, 83.17. Colored, 16.83. Census year, 1850. White, 84.31. Colored, 15.69. Census year, 1860. White, 85.62. Colored, 14.13. Census year, 1870. White, 87.11. Colored, 12.65. Census year, 1880. White, 86.54. Colored, 13.12. Census year, 1890. White, 87.80. Colored, 12.20. In 1790, the first census showed that the colored race formed nearly one-fifth of the population. In 1840, after 50 years had elapsed, during which time the country had received practically no increase from immigration, the proportion of colored had fallen to about one-sixth of the whole. In the next half-century, which closed in 1890, during which the white race has received great additions from immigration, that proportion had fallen to less than one-eighth of the whole population. Summing it up, the colored race forms today less than two-thirds the proportion of the population which it formed a century ago. The following table and the diagram forming Plate 11, Figure 1, represent the rates of increase of the two races. Decades, percentage of increase, white, colored. Decade, 1790 to 1800. Percentage of increase, white, 35.76. Percentage of increase, colored, 32.38. Decade, 1800 to 1810. Percentage of increase, white, 36.13. Percentage of increase, colored, 37.46. Decade, 1810 to 1820. Percentage of increase, white, 34.12. Percentage of increase, colored, 28.57. Decade, 1820 to 1830. Percentage of increase, white, 34.03. Percentage of increase, colored, 31.41. Decade, 1830 to 1840. Percentage of increase, white, 34.72. Percentage of increase, colored, 23.28. Decade, 1840 to 1850. Percentage of increase, white, 37.74. Percentage of increase, colored, 26.61. Decade, 1850 to 1860. Percentage of increase, white, 37.69. Percentage of increase, colored, 22.06. Decade, 1860 to 1870. Percentage of increase, white, 24.76. Percentage of increase, colored, 9.86. Decade, 1870 to 1880. Percentage of increase, white, 29.91. Percentage of increase, colored, 34.85. Decade, 1880 to 1890. Percentage of increase, white, 26.68. Percentage of increase, colored, 13.11. These rates of increase show that in only two decades of the century have the colored apparently increased more rapidly than the whites. The decades between 1800 and 1810, and between 1870 and 1880. The latter, however, is only an apparent excess, due to wholesale omissions in the enumeration of the colored people in 1870. The colored race has almost continuously lost ground in proportion to the white race throughout our history. Although the birth rate of the race is decidedly larger than that of the whites, its death rate as is evidenced by the mortality records of large southern cities, is still greater. 
being not much less on an average than double the death rate of the whites. Since the time of the first records, the colored race has been practically confined to the southern states, as is shown by the map showing the distribution in 1890, where it has practically monopolized labor. There has never been any northward movement of this people of magnitude sufficient to be perceptible in census returns. Indeed, the only important movement among them is southward, from the border states into those of the southern Atlantic and Gulf, from the tobacco states into the cotton states. Plate 11, figure 2, shows the present distribution of the race. In the northern states, the proportion is less than 5% of the population. In the border states, it is less than 25%, while in the states along the Atlantic and Gulf, from Virginia to Louisiana, it exceeds 25%. And in three states, South Carolina, Mississippi, and Louisiana, more than half the population are colored. The highest proportion is found in the first of these states, namely South Carolina, where three-fifths of the people are colored and but two-fifths white. The question has been asked, has the condition of slavery or of freedom proved the more favorable to the numerical increase of the colored people? The figures of the census give us a ready answer. The increase has been more rapid under conditions of freedom. In the 30 years preceding 1860, the colored increased 48%, while in the following 30 years, during only 27 of which they were free, and which included the disturbed period of the Civil War and of Reconstruction, they increased not less than 68%. End of Section 3 Recording by Community.